Uh, again, thank you very much for joining. Um, what you're actually looking at on your screens when you signed in is the actual homepage for Hanshu ESS 3.0. Uh, this is the new makeup on the uh, UI interface on the back office of what you're looking at currently. The app will look slightly different. There are a few similarities, but this actually gives you a lot more information uh, as a company and how you can direct traffic flow, you can manage your uh, installations, and you can do a, an awful lot with things like uh, the settings, upgrading products, uh, finding documentations, warranty aspects, stuff like that. So I'm going to quickly go through a few of the key features uh, of what we need as, a, as installation companies out there to help us, one, sell the product, two, manage our expectations for the customer, but also more importantly, the after sales care that we're giving to the, the, the customers that we're dealing with on a day-to-day -day basis. And from our perspective as a, as a distributor, we follow that principle. So we need it as really easy as possible to get everything set up. Uh, it needs a good ordering process where you order the stock. More importantly, when your installation teams are going out to site to fit these, we need to make sure it's as easy as possible with the correct documentation so there is uh, we minimize any failures or any problems on site it's literally just plug and play and then the after sales from that is we can then remotely access all the devices on site to help you cut down your return visits for any issues that may occur in the future so as a brief overview um when we sign into this home page, it gives us quite a lot of information. So from a company perspective, so anyone that's actually in the office can actually have an overview of how many installations we've currently got out there installed, which gives us a, a, a good indication of how well we're doing as a business. Well, we can actually then specify that and break that down into a day by day product. And how we do that is using your calendar at the side here. So. Uh, today, this is live information for us as a business. So at the moment, we've only uh, got six batteries online that have actually been registered. There will be more by the end of the day, I promise you. But yesterday, for instance, we had 21, five inverters. So each one of these uh, tabs or uh, apps, what you're looking at here, will actually specify what product it is that you've actually installed. So you can, you can gauge how many batteries you've sold, how many inverters you've sold, how many EVs, how many heat pumps. All this is here. Now, to help you guide through the system, it will also load the most recent install on your page here. And you can change it by going into your um, app at the top of this particular section, and you can choose any one of your stations to have a look. Now, this will only populate inverter installs as well as batteries if it's just the battery system you've installed it will not populate in here so just bear that in mind but this does give you the same picture overall as what the customer will see on their actual app so they can see the solar they can see the inverter they can see the batteries the ev charger if they have one the heat pump if it's been installed and obviously the energy going to the home very, very easy to manipulate the data to how you want to look at this. Just by clicking on um, the actual device itself will take you into that device and show you all the settings and everything you've got for it. So this is this particular system you were looking at on that screen there. So it's taking me straight into the inverter and this is live data. This is every 10 seconds, this will update itself on here, showing you what this inverter is doing you know by looking at the actual settings at the bottom whether or not everything is reading correctly because when you go over this every part of this particular install will give you a reading so this particular one that we're looking at doesn't have any solar panels attached to it but it is attached to the grid i know this because i can see the voltage i can see the load of the home so i know that the the meter that it's connected to is working correctly i can see the battery is charging and discharging because of the soc values and what amplitude is going out of it so it does actually give you the information on hand straight away of what you're actually got installed and whether it's actually working to its full potential what it also gives you uh, when you're actually on the um the product is the quick guides these are very useful for your teams to utilize you have 
a quick installation guide. So if they're stuck with a problem or they need a quick answer, they can use these guides, which will load them a PDF of what they need. So I'll use this one as an example. So we'll just load this up for you. Um, I think I might need to share the screen. So give me one second. How do I do this now? So I'll stop sharing that one and I will share this one. So this is the PDF that would load once you click on it. And it gives you a quick breakdown going through step by step what your installation teams need to follow as a guide and how to do it properly, how to do it cleanly and make it look very, very professional for your customers. All the meter information is here, how it all gets installed. It gives you all your distances and, and things like that. So again, very quick to do. Let's just go back to um, hand shoot. Go back to this page. In the overview section of your actual station, this is where the customer can actually sign in and see the same thing. So you will notice, again, the same picture, but on the right-hand side, you've now got station information. So this breaks down the system a bit more for the customer, as well as yourself. So looking at this, we know... Oh, let's get the right one. There we go. So we know by looking at this, we have... Uh, a 3.68 kilowatt hybrid inverter so it's telling me that information there we also know that we've got uh, a 9.4 kilowatt hour battery which is identical to the picture you're seeing here that's a 9.4 battery what it's also telling us is that the uh, import and export information should you load it for the customer will appear here so anyone that's on a flux tariff and you populate that data Every time they buy the information from the grid, at any time they sell their um, energy to the grid, will actually tot up um, an actual amount of revenue that that's generating. And this will appear and be populated up here for the customer to see. Now, I can show you one that I actually did um, the other day, um, which will give you a, a guide of what it would look like when it's properly set out. So here we go, look. So here's your import export tariff. So it goes over a, a month period and will actually um, update itself. Again, this information is available to the customer on the app. But when they go into the uh, inverter on the app and go into analysis, this will appear in there under revenue. Very easy to, to get around the app. Um, everything you see right now, everything you see right now is populated there as well. Again, you get your graphs at the bottom. Quick guides for you guys back in the office. The one that we always get asked for is Octopus. So we need to know if it's uh, compatible. Yes, it is. Oh, I've got an insert issue. Oops, it's gone fine. I'm wondering whether I've got on my internet now. Call that. No, right. So when you go into your devices, invert uh, remote settings, you'll see you've got two options and you can activate them both when they show up. So once we actually load into this inverter, you have to bear with me because the internet's a bit a bit better here at the moment. It's taking a little bit of time. We can actually activate both of these settings and actually prioritize which one we want to use. But I'll show you how it actually looks on the actual monitoring as well. Would you give me one moment while this loads up? Come on. Okay, we'll come back to that. We'll just go into something else. So you as uh, installation companies will have your own accounts. 
So how you actually look at your customers will come up like this. You'll have all your users. It gives you all the customer information and how many plants that they have. Plants refers to the name station. So how many stations do they currently have attached to their names? You've also got their contact details um, when they were actually registered. So again, you can always revert back to any information that you may have lost through your user manual. Uh, your transfer of assets, again, with some installation companies, you can actually transfer stations from one customer to another. Um, and then you can also, um, if you have extra install teams coming on board, um, you can actually assign them with whatever level training that we provide to these installers, we can then increase their uh, accessibility to the actual stations or whether they're installing it, whether they can change certain uh, parameters within the inverter or batteries. This will give them more access, but that will only be given with more and more training that we provide and we can actually certify that they're actually competent and can actually use the service. You also have um, batch settings. Now, this is for sites that you have. Uh, so let's say, for instance, you will have three inverters on the site in three different buildings, but they're all the same variant uh, and you want to do a change to the whole sta uh, station effectively. What we can do is specify which inverters we want to change. Uh, and what setting we want to change and do it as a batch. So we can actually send it out to all of the devices that are actually on site any one time. And that is with any setting on the inverter at all. It's not just specific to um, things like your grid regulation or anything like that. It's literally doing things like setting the octopus up, activating the weather features, changing the charge and discharge abilities, the export limits, literally anything you can do on these inverters can all be done on any batch settings. Uh, the set record is also there for you to use as a tool. Um, again, when my internet decides to play the ball, what this will actually show you is anything that is changed by whether it's an end user, whether it's uh, an installation team, whether it's a, a distributor, or even if it is actually Hanshu themselves, will all be recorded in here with any changes. So we know if something has been changed and it's not working, we know a point of reference that we're looking at and what we need to change back. So this gives you a full history of what you can and can't do with the system or uh, in, in more simplistic ways, fix any issues that could have been created by an end user just pushing a button that he didn't understand. Or she, whichever. Uh, device upgrades, you can do re remote uh, upgrades, but I would strongly advise you at the moment to leave that up to us or Hanshu to do. Um, some people have been pressing the wrong buttons and it has been making problems that we've had to fix remotely. Uh, weather compensation, again, it just gives you an overview of, of what people have actually um, been activated, what they've currently set. So you've got your charge periods, your status and so forth here. Uh, and it will allow you to look at the records when you go into the stations on the right hand side. Uh, on, the, on the actual warranty section, a lot of customers I know will be asking for warranty information. This is how you would share this information with them. Uh, you can send them screenshots, or if they do have the app or, um, and they're quite competent, you can actually guide them in the app by going through the menu. In there, there is the warranty section, and they will see exactly what you're seeing now that's related to their system. Uh, notifications, uh, again, you will be notified if it's something that's uh, relevant to your business uh, and the products that you're selling, you will be notified of any changes that hand you release. Um, and they will tell you in the actual notifications what each one will do. The customer will also receive that notification if it's for them. So I'll give you, for instance, if they release a notification that's specific for a five and a six kilowatt hybrid um, and someone has a 3.68 inverter, they won't get that notification because they don't have that unit. But you as a company will. Um, just to share that information with you there. So let's just try and go back into the inverter again, show you the settings. Does it load? No. Let's try again. Right. So we've got that. Let's see if we can go back into it again now. Here we go. Right. So. For those of you that might want to go out there and install um, AC coupled inverters using a hybrid model with Hanshu, this can actually physically do it for those that don't already know. What that means is if you're going to a property and they already have a solar installation and you want to fit uh, an inverter to store that energy, 
usually you would install an AC inverter. The actual hybrids that we have have that ability. So we would actually go into AC couple mode. And what that basically means is that we can actually install a dual channel meter uh, that will monitor both the grid and the solar, realize what's coming into the consumer unit or the fuse board and know of any excess energy. It will then steal that energy and store it into the batteries of the hybrid inverter and then use that when it's needed, when the, uh, the grid or the, the load increases that demands the extra load. So that's in the settings. You can set that up when you're commissioning the actual system. Octopus, this is what it would look like. So all you need to do is go in and get the current data that's on the actual system. So basically, if, you, if you're used to using a LUX, that's the equivalent to saying read. Um, and then you actually change the parameters that you want. So obviously, when you've turned it on, it will allow you to pick either charge points, which is what you can see here. So it will pick the eight cheapest between midnight and 8 a.m. Um, for 30-minute slots, you can increase or decrease that as you wish. And then it will also do a daytime, which is from lunchtime, 12 o'clock, till 7 at night. Again, you can pick however many you want to do. It automatically populates the data of where the uh, install is because that is utilizing the station information. So it's got the postcode already. So you don't have to do that. But then you can actually prior prioritize. Is it Octopus that you want to prioritize or is it actually the weather compensation if you have them both active at the same time? So if there is a conflict at any time, the system knows which one you want to prioritize. So forget the other one and go on the priority. Again, a really cool feature for that. Some uh, other companies out there haven't even thought about doing that. The weather compensation is very similar to what you've seen before. Um, literally, we just put the times that we want at the top. Um, you can then populate, depending upon the weather um, that you have in your area, what you want your batteries to charge to a point of. So I don't know if you can make out, but this one here, for instance, says if it's clouded between 11 and 25%, you want your batteries charging to 65% SOC when it's going through the uh, weather compensation. It then relies on the other 35% to come from the solar on that day because it knows it is going to get some solar, just doesn't know how much. Again, this will help your customers manage the systems if they don't want to go in there and do any particular changes. So... As a, as a quick rundown, um, as an overall monitoring overview, this is literally how easy it is to do anything. It's all on your homepage for you. It's got quick access. I can set a new user. Um, I can um, create new installation accounts. We can apply for warranties, all from the, the access of the homepage. Everything is there for you. You've even got on the right-hand side, um, your actual breakdown of areas as well. So you know where you are the strongest as a business and which areas you need to focus on and do sales drive to drum up that extra business. But it does give you the confidence to show your customers how good you are as a business, uh, how many installations you've done, how many people you've got in your books, how many people you're managing, it shows you your strength as a business to that in, in customer, which then in turn creates the uh, what's the word, the confidence knowing that they're choosing the right people to carry out their, their installation. So I'm going to leave it there because obviously we, we are short on time and I appreciate you, you've all got things to do. I did promise you that um, we'd have a, a quick chat with uh, any questions that anyone does want to raise on the, on the chat system. So I will go through these. Uh, at the moment, I don't have any on there. So if you want to write down... Um, any any questions or queries um, about what we've just gone through? If you've not understood anything, we can try and raise that for you now. Um, if everybody is happy with what they've seen and they've understood everything um, and they want us to uh, send them a copy of the video, drop us an email to send it through to um, support at infinityinnovations.co.uk. Uh, we will then forward you the actual video that you're you've seen today and you can show it to your teams or you can use it as a, a, a go back to to refresh your information or anything like that uh, or even just 
have a watch over it again. So, anyone got any questions? You got any questions? No. No? You got anything you would like to add to that, brother? No, I think you filled it in there, Phil, to be fair. Sweet. So, we've got a few people. I know you can see my uh, the lovely sign behind me, Infinity. Um, we're good partners with with Hanshu. Um, well, we're actually waiting for from some chat, so I'll give you a couple more minutes, uh, and then we'll we'll leave it there if we don't get any. Phil, there's a question in the QAA section. Yeah. When uh, you click to view a device, it updates every ten seconds. Does this apply to all devices shown? Yes. So the actual live data that you're getting is every 10 seconds. So the question is, uh, you said it updates uh, every 10 seconds. Does this apply to all devices shown? Yes, it does. So whether that in inverter or whether the battery, um, if it's sharing that information, even your EV charger, if it's on your live feed, when you're going into the inverter, it will show that information. It records it every minute, doesn't it? It does record <clears throat> every, every one minute on the actual server as well for mm -hmm. each individual device. Uh, does the string optimization on Android inverter? Uh, get rid of the mm. need for optimizers. So Question. the the actual uh, inverter itself does have shared soul capabilities. Yes, it does. Uh, again, that's a good question. In fact, that's a very, very useful selling feature for you guys. So I'll, I'll just quickly share the screen again, and I'll show you where you find that. Uh, if we just go into a station, but we'll use this one because at least I know I can get into this one. <laughs> My internet. So Do we have any literature on that, Phil? What we can expand on? Um, I can get some, yeah. I know Jake was looking into it. Yeah. So under function settings in your inverter on your settings, there's a, there's a few things. So one is the enabling of the shadow MPPT scanning. So yes, it has shared sol effectively on it. So if you have shading on your panels, there is um, some um, firmware software that's inbuilt in the actual units that will, um, it's very hard to uh, explain how it actually works, but in a, in a nutshell, it reduces the amperages, which in, then in turn increases the voltage, which equalizes the um, the flow of um, power that's coming down the cables um, to increase the performance of what you're actually bringing in when you have shading effect. So it's kind of like the same thing of having an optimizer it's not as effective as an optimizer. Optimizer will always be better for that because that's what they're designed for. But it means that anyone that's limited to a budget can have confidence knowing that the system has some kind of capabilities that will actually combat that for them. Uh, the other thing you've got as well uh, on the screen is the neutral air bonding. So any anyone that wants the emergency power backup uh, you don't have to do any remedial work to actually get that to work either it's all inbuilt inside the actual unit you just got to take it out with a nurse bike and a separate board uh, any other questions let's go back to that uh, no anyone else got any more questions Okay, no, looks like we've got what we need. Um, so what I'll do is I'll, I'll let you guys uh, go and do what you need to do. If you do need to catch up uh, with any questions from installation uh, support, you can email us on installer support at infinityinnovations.co.uk. Um, any questions you have on Hanshu products, if you're not quite sure. Oh, oh we just got another one come through. Off-grid, yes, we can do off-grid systems. There is four working modes on the actual inverter itself. You have a, a self-consumption, which is basically day-to-day -day running. You have a set by time or user-defined is what it actually goes as, so you can actually set your own times when it's charging. And when it's not charged, it goes back to um, daily consumption. You have a backup energy mode, which basically is telling the system to retain certain um, SOC value. In the event that you get a power cut, it's always going to have a certain amount of uh, battery power to back up the system. 
Um, but again, you would need an EPS installed in order for that to actually take effect. You also have a separate working mode, which is off-grid. So as soon as you go into off-grid mode, there's no settings you need to change. The inverter does it all for you when you select that working mode. Everything is done internally. Okay. Right, I think that's it. Yeah, right. Okay, so we're going to end that there. Like I say, if you've got any questions, send an email to install support. Um, if you do want um, a copy of the video, just send that to the support email um, that I mentioned earlier in the video, and they can then forward that video across to yourselves. Thank you very much for taking the time. My name's Phil. This is Tony. Any questions, just send us an email. Thanks very much for watching, and we'll talk again soon. Well done, Phil.